This is water over toilet paper and today I'll be reviewing Akhanda directed by Boy Patsinu starring Balakrishna Pragya Jaiswal Srikant Jagapati Babu and others This film also follows the same Balaya Boy Party template where there are two Balayas here the first Balaya is Murli Krishna who is a people's man and near his town there is a big coal mine extraction going on which is led by Srikanth and they find some uranium and they start doing evil things then there is Akanda the god type Balaya who who gets separated from his mother at birth itself and how he helps Murli Krishna's family in need is the story I often keep complaining that Bollywood doesn't really go full on when it comes to its mass movies and this movie definitely goes full on whether it's the over the top action scenes the dialogue bazi the elevation scenes and the violence and everything there's just this is a lot of everything in this movie I love the action scenes in the first half they're so creative and just like so much fun they overuse the same background score and slow motions and all that the kind of gymnastics they do with bodies are fucking fun and same goes for the dialogues by m ratnam too they're so vibrant and punchy srinu garu mi nana garu baagunnara ane daniki srinu garu mi amma mogudu baagunnada ane daniki chaala teda undi ra lambidi koduka unlike the ones you hear in bollywood films is baar aayenge na तो देख लेंगे सालों को by far the best scene in the movie is when uh, Srikanth and Balaya have this confrontation and they just go off each other they're just in this rap battle with punch dialogues I love how violent and gruesome this movie is to show how evil the villains are they make them run a lorry over a bunch of innocent people with just blood splashing on the driver's face and he's just looking and smiling and it's fun <laughs> and the Jay Balaya song is also fun it's just cute to see Balaya dance I don't know I mean look at this As long as the movie was focused on Murli Krishna's character the movie was fun it I it was somewhat believable you could believe in the stakes they were setting up but as soon as the title character Akanda shows up the movie just goes somewhere else uh, there is no conflict there is nothing left anymore which brings me into the negatives akanda is the biggest problem with akanda i know it sounds dumb but he is literally god there's no beating around the bushes here he says he is god he explains why he is not the same as humans and why things don't apply to him like law and stuff like that you know that in any mass movie heroes are treated like gods but you can still pretend that they can get hurt and they have some kind of vulnerability or something but here you there is just no scope for that he comes in and he just removes any kind of conflict in the story he's the hulk of this universe essentially and that is the biggest downfall of this movie because you spend the entire first half building up one character and then you forget about him in the second half and you are supposed to see this other character who has no personality other than he is god man he is strong and he is very very religious and all that there is not a single moment where he talks normal or something and you are supposed to see the story through him now and that just kills the movie it's not like the murli krishna character was some down to earth relatable man or anything but at least he is human there is something there and also this akanda character has so many monologues about god shiva hinduism blah 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 there's this entire sequence where a bunch of evil people are playing poker in a temple by removing the shiva idol and he goes and beats them up and then he teaches everyone a lesson about how religion is the best and how even in the scientific times religion is the biggest science and all that Yes, like didn't need to be there in the movie, but it is there because Akanda is too OP. They have to make the villains also more evil. This is the same kind of philosophy even in Rajmouli movies. But you somewhat believe that the villains are real, even though they are doing the most inhuman things. But here it's taken to a level where it just looks comical. Here they're casually raping women in front of their own children, and it's just too evil and edgy to take it even seriously. 
then there's a cancerous romance track with pragya jaiswal i mean i know that it's a staple to have a love interest in these type of films but it's just weird to see someone that old with someone that young why can't they acknowledge the fact that the protagonist is kind of old and make the love story a little more mature instead of this cringe inducing creepy old man romancing a young woman and the final problem in the film is it's too long and too bloated there's just way too much slow motion too many action scenes one after the other to the point where you just become numb to the overall thing and there's just too many villains stacked on top of each other there's the mining villain srikant then on top of him there is the bad swami ji type villain on top of it there is this black sadhu swami ji who is evil swami ji also and there are other side villains sprinkled all over the movie it's just too many bad guys and you're just waiting for the movie to end akanda has a fun yet by the numbers first half with good over the top action set pieces and punch dialogues and a second half that is too long too bloated and a main character who is just not relatable or believable or fun and i give akanda a 4 out of 10 thanks for watching this review like this video share this video and subscribe to this channel subscribe, subscribe right, right now. now you can watch our other reviews by clicking on these links tata bye bye